When taking this lesson, ensure that your speaker volume is on and at a comfortable level. You can use the navigation controls to move to the next screen of the course or to the previous screen. You also have the option to turn the audio on or off. In each screen, you'll find a script tab, which you can click to display the full script of the audio track. The menu tab lists all screen titles of all screens contained in the module. You can click on a screen title to move directly to that screen. This course incorporates a variety of instructional formats and resources, such as audio interactions, reference material, knowledge checks, and activity interactions. Please make use of all of these resources, as they are designed to help you reinforce the important learning objectives of the module. There are three modules in this course. At the end of Module 1, you will be able to define data center networking and discuss the challenges encountered without network virtualization. At the end of Module 2, you will be able to describe the VMware NSX virtualization platform and how its features and components benefit the data center. At the end of Module 3, you will be able to Identify real-life use cases where NSX can either solve or enhance current data center network operations and or limitations. This is Module 1. This module will provide an introduction to the limitations of a current data center with server virtualization, but without network virtualization. At the end of Module 1, you will be able to Identify the use and benefits of standard and distributed switches. Examine how a physical network is realized compared to a virtual network. Assess the current software-defined data center's network challenges. Later in Module 2, you will see how network virtualization can help solve these challenges. There are several network challenges that face a data center with server virtualization, but without complete network virtualization. To better understand these challenges, let's first look at how a virtual network is realized and answer these questions. What is a virtual switch? What are the different types of vSphere virtual switches? How are vSphere virtual switches used currently without network virtualization? And what are the underlying physical dependencies of a vSphere virtual switch? Let's get started. What is a virtual switch? A virtual switch is similar in concept to a physical switch. It has ports organized into port groups. It has uplinks used to connect the virtual switch to the physical world. It also supports connections to help you manage your virtual infrastructure. The way a virtual machine connects to a port on a virtual switch is similar in concept to the way a computer's physical network adapter connects to a physical switch. Only instead of using a wired Ethernet cable, the virtual machine's connection to the port on the virtual switch is often referred to as a virtual wire. The virtual switch can also have one or more uplinks. Uplinks are used to connect the virtual switch within the ESXi host to an external physical switch, just as you can connect uplink ports between two physical switches. In the virtual world, you can connect or uplink a virtual switch to an external physical switch. The uplinks shown in this graphic are represented logically. The uplinks are the physical network adapter ports found within the ESXi host. Just like physical switches, virtual switches come in different forms, each with different features. vSphere provides two types of virtual switches the VMware vSphere Standard Switch, or VSS, and the VMware vSphere Distributed Switch, or VDS. Let's take a look at a virtual standard switch. The installation of an ESXi host creates a default virtual standard switch named vSwitch0. This virtual switch consists of ports within a port group that virtual machines can connect to, and uplinks that allow access to and from the physical network. Also, during the installation of your ESXi host, you are prompted for an IP address. This IP address is used to allow management of the host. This IP address is referred to as Management IP. 
It is assigned to a VM kernel port, VMK0. This management port is part of your very first virtual standard switch, vSwitch0. Keep in mind, virtual standard switch creation and configurations are per host. If you have three hosts and you need a virtual network called QA, a virtual switch and supporting port group need to be created three times, once on every host. Now let's compare that to a virtual distributed switch. The virtual distributed switch expands upon the model of a virtual standard switch by providing a centralized management. This is done by giving you the ability to create just one virtual distributed switch that can span multiple hosts, allowing all hosts to share the same configuration. For example, if you have 16 hosts and wish to create a virtual switch, you may have the option to create a virtual distributed switch. If you choose this option, you would only have to create the switch once. During the creation process, you would specify that it span all 16 hosts. This also allows for initial configuration and subsequent changes to be made just once. All changes will be automatically distributed to all 16 hosts. Now let's look a bit closer at the virtual standard switch. A virtual standard switch is available in all vSphere editions. A virtual standard switch consists of port groups, VM kernel ports, and uplink ports. Policies such as security, traffic shaping, and NIC teaming can be defined at the virtual switch level. Virtual switch level policies can be overridden at the port group level, and VLANs are also assigned only at the port and port group level. Click on each icon to listen to more information on the uses, functions, benefits, and disadvantages of a virtual standard switch. Virtual standard switches are used for virtual machine to virtual machine communication and virtual machine to physical machine communication. Virtual standard switches use special ports called VM kernel ports for the following types of network communication, management, vMotion, IP storage, FT logging. A virtual standard switch acts very similar to a physical switch. However, standard switches do not support spanning tree protocol, STP. Virtual switches don't require STP because they cannot be connected to one another and therefore do not pose the possibility of creating a loop between the virtual switches. Virtual switches do not learn MAC addresses like a physical switch, as the virtual machine is directly connected through a virtual wire. The benefits of virtual standard switches are they are simple to create and support the most common network features, such as VLANs, security, and NIC teaming policies. The disadvantages of virtual standard switches are they do not provide a centralized management interface and do not have all the features of a virtual distributed switch. Now let's take a closer look at the use and benefits of a virtual distributed switch. Virtual distributed switches allow for a centralized management model that makes them faster to deploy, easier to manage, less prone to error. The primary benefit of a virtual distributed switch is centralized management. This is achieved because the vSphere distributed switch can span two or more hosts. When the orange port group is created within the virtual distributed switch, it is created once, but has a span equal to that of the virtual distributed switch. Policies are now applied at the port group and port level, as opposed to the virtual switch level and port group level. The ability to apply policies at the individual port makes this virtual switch act more like a physical switch. Again, when the blue port group is created on the virtual distributed switch, it is created once, but has a span equal to that of the virtual distributed switch. Policies are now applied at the port group and port level, as opposed to the virtual switch level and port group level. Since policies are applied at the port group and not at the virtual distributed switch level, 
More general features are added at the distributed switch level, such as private VLANs, net flow, port mirroring, network I.O. control. Keep in mind, virtual distributed switches do require an Enterprise Plus vSphere license.